Hey guys, I have the Artec Leo 3D scanner here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and scan this grenade. Um, we're gonna scan it in two positions, one straight up, then we're gonna flip it and uh, scan it. So when I'm ready, on the bottom, there's a little trigger. I'm actually just gonna do a little quick live preview. You'll see that flashing light going on. Um, when I'm ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and start recording. All right, so I can walk around the part. Um, I'm gonna make it really easy on myself and just turn this thing around. Basically, you just need to get a 360 out of it. Maybe scan a little on the top and around. Perfect. Once I'm done, I'm actually just gonna go back into my project. I'm gonna go ahead and create another scan. I'm gonna turn it over and then I'm gonna go ahead and scan again. So once this is ready, I'm gonna scan and just do the same thing. Just rotate this around. Basically all I need to do is a 360 of it. I could try to go a little lower, maybe capture a little higher on the top. And once I'm done, I have the scan. It's that easy. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I'm just gonna go in here. This does have a touch screen. It can go up and down depending when you're scanning. And I can actually come in here and I can look at the part that I scanned and I can rotate it, look around, pretty amazing. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead and import the data into Artec Studio and then we'll go ahead and process everything. Okay, so I have Artec Studio up here. Um, I have three scans that you'll see. I um, actually did a little quick test scan um, and uh, but I'll work on each scan individually. So scan two here, you'll see uh, Everything with the uh, turntable, we're just gonna go ahead and erase this. I'm gonna use my base selection and highlight the turntable. What it's gonna do, it's gonna highlight that whole area and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit delete. And I'm gonna hide that one and bring in the other one. So let's work on the next one and delete that one as well. Perfect, and delete that out. So I have the two that I need. Um, there's that other scan one that um, I'm not going to use as well. So let's go ahead and leave that out. All right. I'm using highlighted. Sorry about that. Let's uh, just go ahead and work on these two data sets. <clears throat> and uh, I worked on the first one on accident. So let's go ahead and just go back and work on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and erase it. Use the same base selection tool. Highlight it and delete. Uh, I got a couple little things here, so I'm just use the 2D brush and delete as well. All right, so I have the two files. I'm gonna go into my align, and I'm gonna go ahead and align this. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to align these scans. Um, I'm gonna try to set this up in a area where I can see, and I can use my auto align, or I'm gonna use our point pair alignment, which is basically clicking on the part a couple of ways. I'm gonna go put it here. Um, if you can't see it very well, I'm gonna bring the scan color instead of the texture, and then I can find it a little bit better. I'm gonna hit align markers and hit align. Looks good to me. So from here, I'm gonna go into my tools, and I'm gonna do a global registration. So let me hide these other here and go into global. So global, you can use uh, geometry or geometry and texture. This part is enough geometry. I'm just going to go ahead and click. All right. And it's that quick. <laughs> um, you can definitely take a look. And the next thing I'm going to do is a sharp fusion. There's a lot of different ways to create meshes. Here I'm going to do the sharp fusion. Uh, we can fill holes if we like by radius. Um, we could change the radius um, to different numbers. If you see that little arrow, that means that I changed it. I click it back and it'll go back to normal. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just make this a watertight mesh. We can um, do it in different ways, but this I think is uh, a good purpose just to show the, the part. All right. And here's the file. You'll notice that the ring was not able to capture. Um, in the scan data, you can kind of see it, but when we create the sharp fusion, it gets deleted. So let me go back to 
creating another mesh. I'm going to do this with the highest resolution to see just the difference between the two. And they're going to be aligned to each other, so I'm going to have to separate them after I do this. So I'm actually going to go into my align, like we did before, um, and just separate them to kind of see what the difference is. So you can see a little difference, just to show you. Um, so let's go back to that data here. Um, you know, unfortunately, we missed that area with the Leo. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and apply the texture here so you can see what the color looks like. And on this, we can increase or decrease the uh, texture resolution. I'm just going to go somewhere in the middle just for time purposes. The higher you go on that texture uh, resolution, uh, it takes a little bit longer in the processing, um, also a little bit bigger of a data set. So we can adjust the tech the texture res or texture brightness here and play around with gamma, but we can kind of see some detail of of the color. All right, so now I have the Artex Space Fighter. I'm gonna go ahead and scan it with the Space Fighter. What you'll notice is that there is a big standoff distance from what I was scanning with the with the Leo, um, and we are scanning a, a lot slower than with the Leo. But you'll notice that for this purpose, the um, part fits right into this field of view. So very similar in the process. I'm going to try to work this uh, key a little bit better to see if we can get uh, some data a little bit better. I know with uh, the Leo capturing that key would be basically impossible. Um, with the Space Fighter, we should have better results. All right, so almost done. I'm gonna try to see if I could capture a little bit more on the handle. And technique is definitely something that um, comes with practicing. Um, you'll need to do it a few times and uh, uh, to get that technique going, but once you do it, it's uh, very smooth. Um, what I tell people, it's kind of like um, spray painting, right? You want to take the time, kind of go over it, but you don't need to sit in one, in one spot for a crazy amount of time just to, just to capture the data. Um, areas that might have some undercuts or a little um, more detail, kind of like into the ring. Um, you know, you want to bring in to the left or to the right and, and move it up and down, kind of get a, see if you can get into those crevices. So I'll kind of do that with the handle here as well. Kind of go up and down a little, see if I can uh, capture a little extra data. And when I'm scanning, basically, I just want some common overlap. Um, I'm probably over scanning on the bottom side, but I just want to make sure, you know, I get the best details possible. That's no problem. So done here. And now let's go ahead and uh, process into the software. All right. So we now have the two spider scans. Uh, you'll notice that they are um, not one's upside down, one's regular. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through that same process we did before. I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase this base selection. And delete it out. Come back and do the same thing. And you'll notice there's a lot of tools in here. These are all, uh, um, will definitely be covered in training. Um, we can um, go through them a little bit more intensely. Um, so let's go here and I'll get this alignment going. Um, this time I'm gonna try to see if I can do a drop alignment basically uh, to see if I can just drop it in and see if it'll align. Sometimes it's a little bit more work. Um, and not always perfect, but I'll just go ahead and say align. Hey, it worked out pretty well there. Cool. So let's go ahead and apply. I'm going to go through that same process and do the global registration.
And you'll notice on the bottom we have that uh, green bar. This is just your time it takes to get everything uh, processed. All right. Everything looks good here. And let's go ahead and do that sharp fusion. So we are capturing a lot more data. Um, if you look to the right, there are on our Leo 80 and 98 frames or 91. Sorry, these two is the ones we use. Here we're using 393 and 338 frames. Um, so a lot more data. Uh, so processing time can be a little bit longer. But uh, data quality comes out even sharper for these small objects. Right, almost done here. There we go. So this is the uh, difference between Leo on small objects versus Leo uh, versus the space spider. Um, amazing detail. Uh, we have some little leftover data here. I'm just going to go ahead and clear that out with the small objects filter. Um, but you can see the quality of the data on the space spider for these small objects is amazing. Um, I will bring up the Leo data, even though I do believe it is really good. Um, I do feel that for this purpose, uh, you, you know, each one has its uh, benefits and uh, for what they're what you're doing. So I'll kind of get these in a, a general area. Um, I will just pull this down, hit apply, and then let's go ahead and just do the skin color. So you can definitely see uh, quality for Space Spider on the small objects um, is huge. Uh, capturing the ring, capturing that hook, those little points. Um, you know, we can see the, the green here on the grenade uh, versus, um, you know, knowing that it's there. So, you know, each application for um, these scanners have different benefits. Uh, for instance, I would not scan something uh, three feet with the Space Spider, but the Leo would uh, be amazing. Um, you know, different applications for it. So just hope this uh, gives you guys some... Um, Good ideas of the Leo versus Space Spider on small objects. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at rapidscan3d.com. Uh, our email is info at rapidscan3d.com or reach us by phone, 562-912-3544. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, let, us have, let us know if you have any questions um, and we're here to help out. Thanks a lot.